The Power Kitty X20, a budget console that promises to deliver pretty big. Let's check it out. So yes, this is a console that promises to be big on power, yet being very reasonable. It comes in this lovely, or very understated, black box. On the side of it, we've got some details, nothing of interest. And on that side, we've got the company address, website, and the name of the company itself. Shinzen Pao Kiri Network Technology Company. Hmm. And on the back, we've got nothing. So a very understated box. But what do we get in the box? Well, we get this little bag that the console was in. An instruction manual that is actually quite well printed. And yes, it is in Chinese, but it's also in English. And a very special thing about this is actually it's in color. Oh, it's even in German. Oh, they've actually gone to town on this and put it in quite a few different languages. So that is a promising sign. They've actually made some effort. We also get a USB micro cable, which is green for some reason. Maybe it's a new type of USB, who knows? Highly unlikely. Anyway, that's used for charging and transferring data. And the typical Pow Kitty quality certificate. Not that that means much. But what about the console? Well, here it is. And take a look at that. Isn't that quite a beautiful looking console? Not too bad. It does feel plasticky. It doesn't feel like a premium product, but it doesn't feel that bad. Thumbsticks are the typical type of thumbsticks you get on these things. This thumbstick mimics these buttons, but in some games you can configure the control. So maybe you can configure this to dual analog output or actually it's digital. Same with here, this mimics these controls here. We've got a select and start button. There is a built-in screen saver on it, as you can see here, maybe. On the top of the machine, we've got the power on and off. HDMI out, that's mini HDMI out. We'll be checking that. The USB in for charging and transferring data. Micro SD card slot. Headphone socket out. And another micro USB port. What's this one for, you may wonder. Well, apparently, this one is so you can add an extra joypad to it and play two player games. But I don't have any joy pads with this type of connection, so we can't check that. On the back of the unit, we've got the speaker grill here, which is in a really stupid place because as you'd expect when you're holding the machine, your hands cover this up. Not good. And it seems that some of these devices do come with a camera. Thankfully, this one does not, but I presume that's where the camera would go. The bottom of the machine has nothing and the sides of the machine also have nothing as well. So let's power it on and see how good the screen is on this device. So as you can see, it switches on fairly well. And this is a good chance to take a look at the screen at different, um, here we go, got a bit of animation there, at different angles. And as you can see, if we get the picture back on, yeah, it is viewable on different angles. So we do have a pretty decent screen with a reasonable viewing angle on it. Now, as is typical on these type of devices, we've got some games already here so we can get quick access. But if you want to access everything, you have to go down to the game icon here and select your games such as that. So we can see we've got four player game option, CPS, that's basically MAME, uh, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Mega Drive, PlayStation 1, Super Famicom, Game Gear. Now, these directories are on the SD card and I did try to put new directories with new games in them, such as Master System, PC Engine, Bit of Dreamcast and so on. I did try those games, so those ROMs, but they don't work. So it looks like these are the actual machines that this device will support. But we'll take a look at them a little bit later on. Okay, first off, let's check out the music player. Does it play music? Well, of course it does. Let's check it out. So we've got two uh, tracks on here. This is from Ideon on Game Boy Advance. And yeah, it's a basic music player. It plays just fine. Skip to the next track. Maybe not. Maybe it's the LNR triggers. Nope. Nope. Oh, I guess we can't uh, skip tracks. So maybe it's the select button. Nope. Start button. No. 
So you have to go out of the music player and then pick the next track down. Here you go. Now this is uh, an uncompressed WAV file. Um, I can't remember the uh, format that's in now, but it's really, really high quality WAV file and it plays just fine. That MP3 is a 320 kilobytes per second MP3 at 48 uh, kilohertz. So it does play high quality audio. Photographs, well, it's not too good when it comes to showing photographs. This photograph up here is from my phone and it just will not load it. Um, if I do try and load it, it will crash the machine, see? Oh, it did load it. <laughs> okay, well, I tried that yesterday and it wouldn't load at all. But there you go, it is loading it. That is a 108 megapixel image. Um, and now it's loading it. That's actually from my uh, Xiaomi, uh, what's it called? Mi Note 10 Pro, whatever they call the phone. Anyway, so that's a 108 megapixel image and it has loaded it. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay, we're freezing a bit. But as you can see, the images are all distorted. They've been stretched. And, um, yeah, they're not exactly how they should be. And as far as I'm aware, there are no options to change the aspect ratio of the photographs. Yeah, no buttons change them. We just go to the menu there. So let's try that again. See, yeah, yeah, there you go. See, it's very slow to load up the pictures. But you can't change the aspect ratio. It's all stretched. Okay, how about videos? Well, yes, it does play videos. This is a 720p video. Um, this is the uh, Sega Astro Mini promotion video. And yeah, it plays it just fine. I did try a 1080p video and that also played just fine. So no problems there as far as video playback is concerned. As for special features, well, I'm afraid there are none. You can't forward the video or do anything like that. Basically, you have to watch it as it is. And finally, we have a browser where we can browse all the different information on the machine. And the settings. So language settings, there are a lot. We've got it in English. Uh, theme styles, different types of themes we can have, as you can see there. Off screen settings, that's basically your screen timeout. So we've got it on uh, 60 seconds. Key tones and big sound effects when you move the buttons. They're all horrible, so leave them switched off. And system information, as you can see, it's known as the GB2 Retro Game. This is version 1.00. Made in October 2020. Tip. When the handle is used, it cannot be charged. Well, that's actually a lie because I was using it and charging it at the same time. And it charged just fine. So, um, yeah, pay no attention to that. Okay, so let's see how good the game quality is. And you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a quick look on the actual machine itself. And then we're going to check it out on the TV via HDMI. So first of all, we'll try one of the four player games. Let's see how that runs. So these are apparently all four player games. Uh, there's one you don't normally see on these machines. A good old Konami beat em up, which is not usually featured. So pressing the select button, insert your credits and pressing start starts the game as to be expected. Pressing start and select together brings up the menu where we can do save states and so on. We can also remap the controls in this section. So let's just check out the save states. By the way, we can also choose the slots. So we got up to, wow, we got a lot of slots per game. Um, let's go backwards and see what that actually goes up to. Oh, well, it can't go that way. Let's just say we've got a lot of slots per game. Okay, so we'll do save slot one and uh, we'll save that state. And uh, tell you what we'll do, we'll uh, restart the game and then we'll load up the save state and see if it works. All right, let's uh, bring up the menu. Load save state. Yep, not a problem. Okay, let's see how this handles. So as mentioned, these analog sticks just remap those buttons to sticks.
Yeah, this seems to be just fine. In fact, I got to confess, I've never played this version of uh, the game. Oh, I've never played this game, I should say. Basically, it looks like uh, Konami went and uh, took Sunset Riders and uh, reskinned it to some obscure American um, animation, which we didn't get in the UK. Okay, so that's nice to see that running. What we'll do, we'll also check out this exact same game running via HDMI on the TV and see how that handles. Will it slow down when you use HDMI? We'll soon find out. But before we do that, I want to see a vertical scrolling game on this screen. Is it going to stretch it beyond belief like that or is it going to play it in Tate mode? Let's take a look. So we'll go to CPS and 1942 is a vertical scrolling game. Let's give that a try. Yeah, it's going to stretch it unbelievably out this way, so that looks horrible. Yeah, that just looks nasty. And as I said, there is no way to reconfigure the screen. You're stuck with that aspect ratio. Yeah, nasty, nasty, nasty. Okay, so let's get this connected up to the TV and we'll check out the video quality via the mini HDMI out there. So here we are in front of the TV screen. And yes, that is the TV, because as you can see, there is the console, okay. Now it does have one annoying feature here. Well, don't know if you can call it a feature. When you highlight one of these game images, every time the image changes, it blanks out the screen. Look at that. That is bloody annoying. <laughs> so um, yeah, that is one horrible little uh, feature it has. But as you can see, the HDMI video is very nice there on the menus. So let's go into the games and we'll choose the same game that we did before. And uh, yeah, we still got the same issue of every time the image changes, we get that flash, that's horrible. Hopefully it will not do that during gameplay. I really hope not. Okay, let's start up the game and see how it handles via HDMI. Is it gonna be just as good as it was on the actual game screen or the console screen, I should say. Okay, waiting for it to load and yeah. There we go, okay. That took a little bit longer and straight away, I can see that that is... Wow. I don't know if you can hear that. Let me just turn up the amplifier a bit. That is not right, is it? Look at that. Okay, something is not going right there. Let's uh, just start the game. Okay, there's something definitely wrong there. Okay, so either the HDMI out is broken on this uh, device. Bloody hell. <laughs> the HDMI out is broken on this device. Or my TV is just gone crazy. Let's stop the video and uh, see if we can fix this. Okay, so we're back and no, it is not my TV that's gone crazy or the amplifier or the switch box or any of my equipment because as you can see, it's playing the video through this device just fine. But for some reason, the games are not working. So uh, let's try and go back out and uh, we'll quickly go into the options just to make sure there's no TV options there and no, there isn't. There are no options for TV out. Okay, so let's go back into the games and uh, we'll pick a different game this time. We'll pick something from the CPS section or basically MAME. Um, wow, it's got quite a lot of games in there. Let's pick, um, yeah, we'll go with a Neo Geo, Bla uh, Neo Geo game. This is a Z Blade. Let's see how that runs. Okay, well, I'm happy to say that is moving smoothly and I have just noticed this video is being recorded in 4K, 30 frames per second. Sorry about that. Should be doing these videos at 60 frames per second, but unfortunately, I've got the camera set to uh, 4K. So please take my word that this is running very smoothly and it is not dropping frames. It is 60 frames per second. But it is stretched and I don't like that. So... 
Let's fix that with using the TV options. All right, let's go to screen size and we'll change that down to normal. There we go, much better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm, go I'm gonna go back to that first game we tried and see if that is now working. Maybe for some weird reason because we didn't uh, play a video or anything and we just went straight into the game, it went a bit crazy, but uh, let's see if playing that video has actually uh, fixed the machine up and um, hopefully now the game will run better. Okay, so the image is still a bit soft. But yeah, now it's working. Look at that. So that's a bit weird. Um, I guess we should play the video first before jumping straight into the games. Okay, sticking with Konami here. This is the Aliens arcade game. Again, the frame rate seems to be holding up just fine. Not a problem. The sound is clean too, no stuttering. All right, so far so good. Let's get into the actual game. Oh, bugger, I didn't want to pick him. Oh well. Get ready for some uh, really bad gameplay. I have no idea what this guy's moves are. Input lag is typical for this type of device. It's, um, you know, it's what it is. It's, it's there, but, you know, you don't really notice it. You know, unless you're really, really anal. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's what you'd expect, really. Doesn't break the games. Games are still perfectly playable. Yeah, that's working fine. Okay, let's take a look at some other systems, starting off with the Game Boy Advance, because that is usually a bit of an issue. And I've gone and added my favorite Game Boy Advance game to test uh, the quality of Game Boy Advance emulation, the uh, Asterix game. And I did a save state on this, so we can jump straight into the actual game, instead of going through all those introductions. All right, let's load up the save state. Yes, yeah, straight into it. Now, I can tell you straight away that the emulation on Game Boy Advance isn't perfect. See, as you can hear now in the audio, it's slowing down. But when you move to an area with less going on, the audio speeds up. Here, just listen. But don't forget, this is a game that really pushes the Game Boy Advance. So it's expected to, you know, cause some issues, which is why I use this to test the emulation. So let's try out a regular Game Boy Advance game. So here we are with Inspector Gadget, just a regular Game Boy Advance game. No fancy graphical features or anything like that in this game. And as you can see, it will run perfectly fine. Once we get into the actual game, that is. See? No problem. Horrible grainy audio though, I should expect for the Game Boy Advance. But yeah, the frame rate's holding up fairly well. Okay, let's take a look at one last Game Boy Advance game. We're going to go with something a little bit more demanding. We'll go with a 3D game. This is Ford Racing 3. Yeah, like Asterix, this one seems to be pushing the Game Boy Advance simulation quite a lot. So it isn't uh, moving very well. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's pretty poor actually. So I think for Game Boy Advance, you're probably best sticking with the regular 2D games and forget about playing the 3D games on it. Okay, let's take a look at regular Game Boy and Game Boy Color. So we've got the classic Double Dragon here. Let's start this up and see how it plays. Now obviously um, the image is a little bit uh, on the blurry side due to the low resolution of a real Game Boy. But yeah, it's not too bad. And as you can hear, it sounds as it should. It also plays as it should. So what about Game Boy games that have uh, the Super Game Boy features? Do the Super Game Boy features actually work on this device? Well, let's take a look. And the answer is, yes they do. This is Kirby's Dream Land 2, and as you can see, We've got the colorful borders and some color on the games. So Super Game Boy compatible games do work as they would do on a Super Game Boy, which is a nice little touch. Now what are the controls on this? Oh, there we go. Okay, I've got it. <laughs> no, no, I haven't got it. <laughs> Must be a turbo button or something. Ah, there we go. <laughs> you can tell I've never played this before. Whoop. <laughs> Man, I suck at this. There we go. Whoop. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting the hang of it now. But yeah, as you can see, that's working really nicely. Oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Game Boy Color games are working just as I'd expect. Good. Okay, let's move on to the 16-bit consoles with the Sega Mega Drive. So what we'll do first is we'll let the demo run and see how it handles the um, interlaced two-player mode. Let's turn up the volume a little bit. All right, handling that pretty well. Again, the image isn't pin sharp, but it's not too bad. And the sound is good. Definitely got that stereo effect there. Okay, let's get into the game and see if it controls well. Should do, I don't see any reason why not. Yeah, it's fine. As I said, if there is any lag, it's, you know, it's that low, you, you wouldn't even notice. It's definitely not gonna make uh, a big difference to people's game playing skills. I mean, that feels fine to me. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. No juddering, nothing at all. That is lovely and smooth. Okay, let's check out Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. Now, this is a system that normally causes a lot of issues for these type of devices. And as you can see, I've put on some, yep, games that are going to stress the emulation. So uh, it came with 312 games built in, by the way. Zero Chariot, yeah, F-Zero. But we're gonna check out these games with the special chips, see how it handles them. We'll start off with Star Ocean. I wonder if this is gonna play. Yeah, it's actually that muffled on a real Super Famicom, so don't worry. Would you like some coffee, Captain? Yes, Huge amount of unidentified energy. Where? 
Yep, that's working perfectly fine. That is exactly how it should be. All right, so that is good. That's good to see. Now, as I mentioned, on a real Super Nintendo or a real Super Famicom, the male's voice is very muffled. That's just the way it is. So, uh, yeah, that's working fine. Let's check out a Super FX game. We'll go with Stunt Racer FX, or Wild Tracks, as it's also known. All right, let's uh, get this running. Okay, so far so good. We'll go with Speed Track, why not? Start, acceleration fast. Yeah, just get into the game, please. Yeah, novice, why not? Oh, I did hear a bit of stuttering then on the audio. Now, this game is notorious for having really crappy slow frame rates, so um, let's see how it handles this on this device. Uh, yeah, actually, that's about the right speed, to be honest with you. That's pretty much what it runs like on a real machine. I think the audio is a little bit juddery, though. But, yeah, it's... Uh, about right, really. Okay. And the final test, we're going to test the DSP game. Got to do Pilot Wings, my favourite. Nice. Okay, and we've checked out uh, special chip games on the Super Nintendo. Let's check out a regular game. We'll go with F0. And if that controls fine, then you know everything else is going to work just fine as well. Let's get into a quick race. That's fine. Not a problem. Okay, I'm happy to say that Super Nintendo emulation on this device is spot on. Well, as spot on as you can get for a cheap device like this. Not bad at all. Okay, finally, we're going to take a look at PlayStation 1 and Game Gear. We'll go with Game Gear first and finish up with PlayStation 1. 40 Game Gear games built in. We'll go with, ooh, let's see. We'll go with an action game. We'll go with Winstar. So when you see games like this, you realize just how powerful the uh, Sega Game Gear was, you know, graphically, I mean. And don't forget the Sega Master System is the same machine, so this is also, you know, example of what Sega Master System could do. They were both uh, very capable machines of their time, especially the Master System, because that came out uh, a lot earlier than this did. Okay, and we go to PlayStation and just one, Tekken 3. Now, actually, I did try and put uh, some other PlayStation games on here using uh, Q and bin files and also an ISO file, but they didn't work. The games have to be in this uh, CCD and image format. And unfortunately, um, I don't have any of those uh, already made ROMs on my machine, so on my PC, so um, yeah, I couldn't be bothered making any. But anyway, Tekken 3 is one that does uh, push a PlayStation. So it runs in high resolution, so let's see how it works on this device. Just turn that volume down a little bit. Now I've got to say, the HDMI image on a PlayStation game looks much sharper than it does on the uh, older machines. Obviously because the uh, PlayStation itself would be running in a higher resolution than those other machines. In fact, that looks, <laughs> that looks pretty good actually. That looks nice. And as we all know, I cannot play Tekken, and I'm definitely not a fan of Tekken, but that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is so you can see how good the emulation is, and it seems to be just fine. Well, 
So there we have it. That is the Pow Kitty X20. And honestly speaking, I think that this is a fairly good device for the money. I mean, it's not expensive. It's got HDMI out that, although it did have that little niggle at the very beginning, after that, it worked perfectly fine. There wasn't a problem with it. Um, we got the stereo sound from the HDMI as well. We also got stereo sound from the headphone socket. It plays lots of games very well. Even the Super Nintendo Special Chip game seemed to work very well on it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not going to play everything perfectly. Uh, some of the arcade stuff won't run as smooth as you'd expect. But for the money, you're getting a pretty good deal here. And I know there's going to be people saying, well, you can just get a PSP and mod it. But the thing is, not everybody can mod things and not everybody wants to mod things. Some people just want to buy something cheap, stick it in a bag and play some games when they take it out somewhere. Not everybody wants to mod a PSP. So that's what this machine is aimed towards. Not for the enthusiast who likes to mod things and is into uh, installing their own emulators and customizing millions of options and things like that. No, this is a machine for somebody who just wants to buy something, play some games and not mess about with any configurations or anything like that. So yes, a modded PSP would be better, but you know, that's not the person that this machine is aimed for. So I do think this is pretty decent value for money. And as you can see here, um, I mean, you can see that screen perfectly fine. Uh, another downside, I think, is the fact that you can't change the aspect ratio. It is stuck in 16 by 9. That's not too much of a problem when you play on the TV because you can change your TV settings to a 4x3. But um, yeah, it would have been nice to be able to change this uh, screen to 4x3. But anyway. You can't have everything. So if you're interested in buying one of these, I'm going to put a link in the video description down below. Check it out and um, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Until then, take care and keep on gaming. See ya.